Hey, this is Freddy from 18 Frames Rentals and today we're going to take a look at a very special camera. The company is called Setcam and it's the E2. Okay, if we take a closer look at things now, uh, this camera is uh, constructed fully out of a um, aluminium alloy body. It doesn't have any fans in it at all. And on the top here you got your LCD screen, your record button and five menu buttons. The back here uh, we got uh, our I.O. which is a 12-pin LEMO connection for multicam synchronization. Um, uh, full size HDMI out. Um, Wi-Fi antenna, Ethernet in, USB Type-C, power, uh, a VGA connector or DB9 connector, mini XLR and 2.5mm LANC or LANC jack. We got our 3.5mm jacks for uh, audio and um, microphone as well as three one quarter inch mounting screws. Uh, taking a look on the right hand side we got our CFAST 2.0 slot and three quarter inch mounting threads as well. Just like on the bottom, two mounting threads and one safety pin hole. If we take a look at the front of a camera, on the left side, three quick menu buttons and the power button. Um, there's a tele light and then there's nothing much else. We can take a look or we should take a look at the very interesting internals of this camera because as I mentioned before it does record uh, 4K DCI up to 120 frames continuous internally on the CFast card. Uh, it does full HD in 240 frames per second. You can either do this in 10-bit in H.265 or 8-bit in H.264. It also has a, a, a two circuits on the, the PCB which gives this camera the ability to uh, have two native ISOs. Um, it's either 80 or 160, depends on if you're going on standard dynamic range mode or wide dynamic range mode, or if you go into the upper second native ISO, it would be 800. Second claims it has 13 stops of dynamic range in standard dynamic range mode and up to 15 stops in wide dynamic range mode and we're gonna test that out today. The only important thing here is that your gray card is almost evenly lit by the same light source, so you get a horizontal line in your waveform monitor, or almost horizontal, you're never gonna get it perfect, but that's okay, that's okay. Just make sure all of your frame is filled with kind of the same gray, and it's exposed to mid IRE, so it's at mid-level at 50, and then, you also have to check that your lens is uh, stepped down to an f sop of like 5.6 or 8, so you got a couple uh, steps up and a couple steps down. And the way we do it from there is basically just turn your um, aperture up and down. Up until you get clipping, so full white, or down until your blacks crush. So now that we shot all those clips ranging from all black to all white, uh, I brought them into a timeline and I just go ahead and line them up on top of each other real quick here. So once we got this done, um, we get our video effects and put a mask on the middle of our frame since there it is um, most likely to be uh, evenly lit. You can see it on your uh, waveform monitor on your left side and once we are done with that we can spread um, all the different shots out into one big shot and uh, clean up with another mask so um, those highlight parts from the focus area disappear and now we've got a waveform which basically tells us um, how many stops our sensor can put into its dynamic range from all the way black to all the way white. And to give you an idea how other cameras behave in this test, um, we did this with uh, other cameras as well. So you can see here, say, um, Sony a7 III, a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and the GH Drive from Panasonic.
So all of the tests were done at the base ISO of the cameras and at the highest quality codec they can provide. So since this video is about the set cam, we are going to take a closer look at the dynamic range chart from this camera. As I told you before, there are different settings you can choose in your camera profile. So it's either SDR or WDR, on which set cam claim to have uh, 13 stops, up to 13 stops in SDR and up to 15 stops in WDR. But they also did bring out a new beta firmware which promises to keep uh, 15 stops of dynamic range in a SDR mode with a set lock to gamma curve. There are a couple of problems with this test. This is very subjective, so um, it kind of depends on um, where you start counting and where you end or which picture is still usable and which is not. So that's why we just showed you how we did it and the results and what you take from it is um, kind of up to you. However, we did notice a big step up in SDR mode with the new beta firmware. So um, if this comes out, we really recommend using it in Setlock 2. And same thing goes with the colors. We put up to the test a um, couple different cameras. You can see it's the A7 III again, GH5 Blackmagic pocket similar camera and a C200 for good measurement. And again, they were shot in base ISO uh, with the highest quality they can shoot at. So the cameras who could shoot in RAW were shot in RAW. Sony was shot in SLOG2 and the GH5 in VLOG. We've put a basic grade on all of these shots and we're willing to um, give you the raw material if you want to check it out for yourself. So we've put this very strong blue light in the background with a gradient to see if the color is clipping. You got your skin cones, uh, it's lit with an aperture 300D uh, at 5.5K and you got your color chart for the white balance. So you should be all set to find out for yourself if this is worth it or not. Okay, so after playing around with this camera for a little bit and doing some tests, it's time for a resume. Uh, let's start with the things we didn't like so much or a set cam could improve on, in our opinion. First off, um, those menu buttons. They kind of seem mushy. The, the click point is really hard to tell if you really clicked or not. So sometimes you, you do a double click. Sometimes you, you don't do a click if you did think you did. It doesn't make it frustrating to navigate the menu, uh, especially because uh, if you don't use it on an iOS device or your computer for control, uh, you're pretty much stuck with these buttons, even if you use an external monitor. Right now there's only MOV or MP4 uh, recording uh, containers. Uh, I'd like to see ProRes or maybe RAW, I don't know. This might be a thing SecCam is uh, gonna improve on in the future. I mean, an SDI port would have been nice. Right now we're stuck with uh, HMI. I mean, it's full size and we, you've got the uh, mounting holes to, you know, kind of fasten it uh, down so it doesn't come out, but uh, I always prefer SDI over HDMI and it would be nice to have the choice. So I think that's about it, what we didn't like or what we think uh, SecCam could improve on. But on the other hand, there's uh, lots and lots of things we did like uh, about this camera. First of all, starting with, with the size, it's super small, uh, but while being small, you have tons and tons of mounting options, so you could actually rig this up to anything. You could use it like it is on, on um, like a gimbal or maybe um, a glide cam or something, or you can rig it up to like a cinema style shoulder rig, full blown with monitor, uh, follow focus, everything. That's no, no problem, no big deal with this camera. It does have, of course, uh, 120 frames in 4K and 240 in uh, Full HD. You can either go 8-bit or 10-bit, which is always appreciated. If you use the app for um, a live feed from, from the camera, um, it's amazingly lag-free. So you can use it on, on like any, almost any scenario. I mean, I wouldn't pull focus on like a tough shoot on it, but apart from this, uh, you can use it no worries, and if you use the antenna, you won't have connection problems. Last but not least, uh, the image quality is superb. The uh, colors are accurate. Uh, you can push them around in post, it's no problem. Uh, you got your uh, dual native ISO. You have plenty of dynamic range, even though we didn't measure the 15 stops uh, SecCam is claiming. Yeah, and I mean the price, it's 
2,000 bucks for this kind of camera, which you can, could use for so many different things. I mean, you can all go all the way from like a high-end uh, streaming setup to a full-blown cinema rig. Uh, you can do it all with this camera. You can do multi-camera shoots. You can do gimbal work. Uh, if you pair this up with a speed booster and some nice lenses, you're gonna have a great time with this camera. So. Um, if you want to check it out, we have it uh, for rent here in Hamburg. Um, if you're from Germany, if you're from Hamburg, swing by. See for yourself if it uh, can deliver what you're expecting from this. So there you go. It's like Cami too. <laughs>